So, over the past week, I've been watching Young Justice, and I've only seen the first 10 episodes. So I thought, hey, why not do, like, a vlog of my thoughts on the show so far, and I'll also do stuff for the other episodes. I might do, like, three a video after this, maybe five, just to make it more consistent. But yeah, this is supposed to just be here as sort of like a filler type of content. You know, content you can watch, but you can skip over if you want to get to the big stuff. Mostly because I, I wanted to do something, and since my editors are busy with other videos, I decided, you know what, why not just do like a vlog type of thing for the show? So, yeah, Young Justice. I remember one time I actually watched one episode, but I'll get to that at the end of the video. So, I'm going to look at the first two episodes as they're one thing so the first episode is about the young justice those being well the sidekicks of heroes like batman super no batman aquaman green arrow and who was the last one again oh yeah right flash their sidekicks robin aqualad speedy or red arrow and kid flash stopping ice villains and it turns out they're going to be members of the justice league unfortunately they just get a backstage pass and I found it hilarious with uh, Roy's reaction to all this because Green Arrow hyped it up as if he was going to be a member, but not really. It's kind of like telling your kid, "Hey, hey, kid, we're going to the dent, we're going to a uh, Disney World," and then you take them to the dentist for their dental appointment. Yeah. So I thought uh, Roy's reaction was pretty appropriate. So after they leave, they're like, "Okay, well, there's a message going on that they need to stop um, this crime thing, but since they're not here, why don't we do it instead?" And I, I thought that was pretty nice. I actually thought at first was, is this like a test thing they're doing? Like, is this all like one big test? But no, it wasn't. And they find, and they go down um, and stop this other, pretty much what they're trying to do is that they find another, another location. And after fighting some enemies, they discover a cave with a clone of Superman known as Superboy. And he's pretty pissed off until the very end where he makes up his mind. He's like, you know, I'm just going to help you guys out. And... They're all like, you know what, since you guys worked as a team and were able to survive fighting an actual crisis, we're going to give you guys a new title, Justice League Junior Heroes. That's pretty much what they're called. And at the end of the episode, McGann or Miss Martian, who is Martian Manhunter's niece, comes in. And she's like the one female of the group, so everyone else is all like, whoa, I know what I'm doing tonight. Yeah. That happened. So yeah, the first ep the first two episodes I thought were pretty fine. Uh, they were definitely enjoyable and kept me on my toes, even though I did watch the first episode back while, but only like the first half of it before they go on on the mission. As for the third episode, that's the one where since Miss Martian is on the team, uh, they're like, okay, we need to find out what's going on with her. We need to know what's, what she's all about and she can shape shift and also read their minds without their, without their consent. Okay, that's just awkward to say out loud, but anywho, so they go on a mission, and they see this guy who who they think is Red Tornado, but it actually isn't, and they actually find a pretty nice way of beating him, until the very end, where Megan, or Miss Martian, just crushes them with a boulder, and I thought, oh shit, she just killed a real life person, this is pretty messed up, this show's pretty hardcore, and I'm enjoying it, no, it's just a robot, which I am slightly disappointed, since damn, that was really brutal, but, uh, uh, I guess they had to make them look good somehow. Anywho, pretty decent episode. On to episode f four, I believe? Yeah. that's In this episode, the gang have to go on a stealth mission to help out Bane. Which should be really awkward for Dick Grayson, considering how, you know, Bane is one of Batman's arch enemies. And also did this to him in an alternate timeline. I was wondering what would break first. <laughs> 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 Your spirit? <coughs> oh, your money! Oh yeah, speaking of which, I just find it funny that Bruce, um, that, like, no, all the other kids, they have to wear, like, stealth suits. But for Robin, he has to wear the exact same color, colors, you know, the bright yellow and red. Though he does have a black um, cape, so I guess it helps him hide in the shadows. But still, that always confused me about Robin as a kid. Why does Batman wear, wear the dark colors to hide into the shadows? Whereas with Dick Grayson, or whatever version of Robin, he wears bright colors that are pretty much saying, Hit me! Hit me! It feels so weird. 
But anyhow, the episode was pretty fine. I liked one moment where Wally tripped up and caused him to get caught on accident. So I thought that was pretty funny. On to episode five. Five. Uh, I liked the opening bit with um, Superman and, and Superboy where they're trying to save a car from falling off a bridge. And Bruce and Superman talking at, you know, Batman and Superman talking to Cafe. And Superman isn't very happy because um, he just doesn't feel comfortable talking about how he might have accidentally conceived a child, even though it's a clone of him. And I like how Batman's all like, uh, dude, I raised three, three boys and one girl. This is literally nothing to me. Oh, yeah. Speaking of which, Superboy thinks that he's a living weapon that can do anything and he can win any fight until he gets schooled by Black Canary, which admittedly is pretty funny to watch. Until they go on a mission to stop Amazo. Oh yeah, for context, if anyone doesn't know who Amazo is, he's pretty much Taskmaster. If Taskmaster was a robot and could copy superpowers. Though I find it funny that they defeat him a lot easier than the Justice League who had to take him on for seven hours straight. And these guys are teenagers. Are we sure these guys aren't Justice League material? They are able to stop something that not even the, that the Justice League could stop on their own? Pretty weird, not gonna lie. Anywho, we got the next episode to talk about. Infiltrator. Now, this episode introduces Artemis, uh, Green Arrow's daughter. Oh yeah, one thing I forgot to mention was that in an earlier episode, I like how when Speedy shows up to, you know, uh, take down his own his own bad guy, the gang show up and are like, hey, you want to join our club? And he's all like, piss off. But here, yeah, they're not very subtle with the fact that this is not actually, um, uh, who is it? Uh, Green Arrow's daughter, because at the end of the episode, uh, Artemis talks to Roy, and Roy's are like, I know you're not your daughter. I know you're not his daughter, because I've been with him for most of my life. I'm pretty sure he would have known if, I had, if he had a daughter. So I liked how they cleared it up right away. But pretty much in this episode, they have to stop um, the League of Shadows from killing this one person, and also trying to stop them from unleashing a virus onto uh, some populated areas. Yeah, this episode feels really weird talking about nowadays. It really does feel awkward. And I like how the... But still, I just find it funny that uh, the, the person they're trying to protect is so ungrateful to them the entire time. It's just hilarious to me. But, yeah. Nothing much to say other than the fact that I do like how at the end, uh, Cheshire Cat blackmails Artemis saying, Hey, I know about your history, so uh, you're just going to let me uh, walk away, right? Right? But, yeah. On to episode 7. Uh, this episode introduces Dr. Fate, um, who I don't know- Of course. Nelson was Earth's Sorcerer Supreme. That feels weird, but I'll allow it. Pretty much, the guy who was Dr. Fate uh, got kidnapped by a whiny brat. Yeah, I'm sorry, I don't like the kid. I know he's supposed to be annoying, but dear God, his voice is so annoying. He sounds like the type of kid who would be like, But Mom, I want a PlayStation 5 for Christmas, not a PlayStation 4. God! That's, that's how he sounds like. Oh yeah, also there's a moment where uh, Wally tries to impress uh, Miss Martian by saying, Oh yeah, I believe in ma I believe in a science, and no, I believe in a magic, even though he doesn't, just to impress her. And it pretty much reminds me of how it's all like, Wait, so you don't believe in Santa Claus? No, I'm sorry I don't. That, that's what it reminded me of. Oh yeah, speaking of which, uh, this episode also reminded me of two other things, but I'll talk about them later on. Um, when I'm almost done. Uh, one, other, one other thing I did like about the episode was, for one, I actually liked Wally in this episode. I think he was at his best here. Mostly at the end with uh, Dr. Uh, Kent Nelson. Pretty much, they're trying to fight this guy named Canador. He's the one with the, uh, who, the one who has a, a whiny voice. And they bring up how if they destroy the cat, he can't be on Earth. So wait, couldn't they just shoot the cat? Or, you know, stab the cat? I know that sounds really messed up, but... Hey, it's a cat that, you know, will stop a sorcerer of darkness from, you know, invading the planet. Oh, yeah. And also, I like how at the end, um, Kent decides to stay in the Dr. Fate thing. Uh, because even though he wants to die to be with his wife, he realizes that, hey, she's going to be there for an eternity. So, I think he can wait a few more millennia. The ones of the stuff that this episode reminded me of, number one, when they were in, like, the Dr. Fate helmet, it reminded me of how when Ben uses Alien X in Ben 10, he would have to talk to, like, the, the, the two floating heads in there. I don't know. I know, I know that's not intentional since it came out since, you know, Dr. Fate existed before Ben 10, 
but still that's just what it reminded me of since it's my first real exposure to him and secondly at the end um i forgot to mention this but wally has like this quirk where he likes to bring souvenirs back from missions and i think i'll let the clip speak for itself Can I get rid of this, too? Which makes sense considering how Wally and Michelangelo are the goofballs of the team. But still, it's probably my favorite episode. I don't know. I just think it was the one I enjoyed the most, personally. As for the next episode, it's about Aqualad being blamed because the team went on a mission to stop Clayface, only to lose. And since Aqualad's the leader... Yeah, he gets blamed for it. So he decides to go back to Atlantis and finds out that the girl he has a crush on is dating his best friend. Awkward. Yeah. Oh yeah, and Aquaman has a baby on the horizon since uh, Mira got pregnant. Though this is something that I find weird. Okay, I understand that the Atlanteans have their own type of tongue to them, their own type of language. But it's weird how they go from talking in this language to then talking English. It's just so weird to me. Like... I'm sorry, but it just feels weird. Oh, yeah, also, by the way, that the person, uh, Aquaman's, uh, well, you know the guy who was, uh, dating Aqualad's friend? He has a Sokka haircut. That's all I could think of when I saw him. Oh, and also the fact that Black Manta attacks them while they're underwater. So, yeah. Though, wait, since this guy has electric powers, the, the best friend to Aqualad, if Pokemon's taught me anything, electricity is super effective against water, so... All of them should be deep-fried fresh at this point. What a comic book logic. However, in the B stuff, the B plot, I actually enjoyed it. With the B plot line, you have stuff like uh, Wally having his grandpa's birthday, and also a something with Artemis, where her mom gives her an invite to Gotham High School because Bruce Wayne paid for everything, and she actually wants her to go because it would give her a better life. It's actually a nice moment. Oh, and also there's the stuff with Dick Grayson feeling like he should be blamed too since he was originally going to be a leader, but just wasn't up for the task. So yeah, pretty decent episode. On to the next episode, the gang have been in the desert and had their memories erased. Oh yeah, what I find funny is that Robin said that he thought it was March, and I just find that funny because I started watching the show in the month of March. Oh yeah, by the way, a Nolan North character is in the desert. I have been playing too much, too much Uncharted. I almost said Nathan Drake. But then I realized, oh wait, Nathan Drake is the title of the first game, Uncharted Drake's Fortune. But still. Now for this episode, there's not much to talk about other than there's this one stupid line at the end of the episode between uh, Miss Martian and uh, Superboy that I'm just going to play real quick. You're strong, and I'm stubborn. Together! I'm sorry, I just couldn't help myself. That line was that bad. Oh yeah, I find it funny that even though Aqualad is dying because, you know, the desert doesn't have much water in it, Miss Martian decides to say, screw Aqualad and go save Superboy. Okay, I get it that everyone in this show is simpy towards one another, but still, I mean, the guy could literally die if you don't give him water. That's just pretty messed up. But yeah, that's all I can really say about the episode. It was fine. On to the final episode. Okay, so the A plot is actually pretty good. Pretty much, Roy and Aqualad have to protect these two um, political figures from going to war each other as Lex Luthor shows up and tries to get them to sign a peace treaty. However, the League of Shadows are trying to kill them, so that way it'll stop the peace. Now, this is actually a pretty good A plot. What's the downside of this episode? It's the B plot. Pretty much... Miss Martian and Superboy decide to go to high school, and I'm like, okay, I understand that I understand that they want to give them a normal teenage life, but they're aliens. They don't need to go to school for crying out loud. Like I'm just saying, like I understand Wally, a, uh, a uh, Robin, and Artemis need, needing needing to go to high school, but not Superboy and Miss Martian. Those guys are aliens, whereas with the other three, they're regular human beings. Oh, and Aqualad, he doesn't count since, you know, Atlantean. But still, I was just not a fan of the B-plot. The A-plot was good, but it just bothers me that every time it gets super interesting, 
they just have to cut back to this plot line. It just really annoyed me. Oh uh, yeah, at the end, it's revealed that Lex Luthor and Rachel Al Ghul were work together, working together the entire time. So no matter what, they were going to win. Or make it look like Lex Luthor is a good guy. But I did like how Roy brought up how he doesn't trust Lex Luthor. It makes sense. But, yeah. I could have sworn there was something else I wanted to talk about with this episode, but I just forgot about it. Um... Nope. I don't think I have it. Oh yeah, I forgot. Oh yeah, now I remember. Uh, Roy brings up how there's an imposter among his team. Well, an imposter among Aqualad's team. So that means one of them is pretty sus. I'm sorry. Again, I couldn't help myself. But yeah, if you had to ask me who I think the imposter is, I think it's Artemis or Aqualad. Why, you may ask? Well, it's because with Artemis in a previous episode, Cheshire blackmailed her into not turning her in or else secrets would be revealed about her. Oh, and the reason why I say Aqualad is because I remember as a kid, the one time I, I uh, found an episode airing on Cartoon Network, it was one where like Aqualad betrayed them or something. I don't remember the full story. All I remember is that like, like Aqualad betrayed them. I, I don't know if it mean anything, but, excuse me, excuse me, I just had dinner, but still. So anyway, that's why I saw the first 10 episodes of Young Justice, and so far it's pretty good. I might do three or five episodes per video just to make it short, but I still have like 88 episodes left to go through. So joy. Anyway, see you guys next video. Bye.